Hi guys, we are doing 11.2, simplifying radical expressions. So we know a radical is something under a root. Normally it's a square root, but it could be a cube root. So today we're going to learn how to simplify them. So it says to make them in their simplest form, no perfect squares other than one are in the radicand. And the radicand is this part underneath here. Okay, no fractions are in the radicand, so you can't have a fraction inside. And no radicals appear in the denominator of a fraction. So we can't have like something like this in the bottom. They don't like that. Okay, so there's a way to deal with that. So we are going to be multiplying product property of radicals. And it says here, a square root of a, to a and b can be split up as a square root of a times the square root of b. Okay, so we're going to start, use the product property of radicals. So here, I'm just going to do it out here, square root of 32. So what you're looking for, they're saying, is there can be no perfect square in there. So you look at the number and you try to find if there's a perfect square. And 32 is 16 times 2. So that's what they did. Think about it as 16 times 2. Okay, because you know that 16 is a perfect square. So it helps sometimes to have a calculator and try to figure out if it has a perfect square. Then you can go ahead and say the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, just like they showed you up here. And then you can simplify the square root of 16, which is 4. And then the final answer is 4 times the square root of 2, because the square root of 2 is not a perfect square. This is used a lot in algebra, so you really have to be good at this. You see this a lot, simplifying. It's not difficult. The more that you practice, the better you'll get, okay? All right, so let's do another one. The square root of 9x to the third. All right, so you should recognize that the 9 is a perfect square, so I am going to go ahead and just take it to this. That's a perfect square times I have three x's. Two makes a perfect square and then one left over. I kind of skipped this step and just went straight here. You can use this step too, no big deal, until you get to a place where you get more comfortable. So nine is a perfect square and that becomes three. And this is a perfect square that becomes x. And then this is not a perfect square, so it stays inside the radicand, the square root of x, and that is your final answer. So square root of 9x cubed simplifies to 3x square root of x. All right? Is this like a puzzle, breaking down perfect squares? All right. So let's, let me do, let me just make one up here, still from example one. So say I had the square root of 50 um, x squared, okay? So I'm looking here, can I make a perfect square out of 50? Well, here's that second step. I can say 25 times 2 and x squared, okay? This is multiplication, not a decimal. So I know then I can break it down to square root of 25, which is a perfect square, x squared, which is a perfect square, and then the square root of 2, which is not a perfect square. You always want to leave the one that's not a perfect square at the end, just the way you write it. So you know that the perfect square of 25 is 5, the perfect square of x squared is x, and that would be 5x square root of 2. So that is an extra example I just made up. Okay, multiplying radicals. I've got the square root of 6 times the square root of 6. Do you notice that they're two of the same thing? So watch what's, what's going to happen. So I have two of the same thing if I combine them. So 6 times 6 is 36. And what's the perfect square of 36? Is it not 6? So if I told you the square root of um, 8 times the square root of 8, you should be able to look at this and know the final answer is just going to be 8 because you're going to put it together as 8 times 8, 
which is 64, and then the perfect square of 64 is 8. So basically, if you've got perfect squares and you've got two of the same thing, it's just going to be whatever the answer is. It's a neat little trick. So here, though, they have the square root of 3x times 4 square root of x. Okay. So you've got the four on the outside of the radical. So when I combine stuff, I'm going to leave what's outside, outside, right here. And then inside, I've got a three, and I've got an x and an x, so I can call that x squared straight away. Okay? So is three a perfect square? No. Is x squared a perfect square? Yes. So the next thing I'm going to do is the four still here. I'm going to write the perfect square next. And then I'm going to leave the square root of 3 here. That is not a perfect square. So this is going to simplify. It's going to come out of its square root. And I'm going to say 4x square root of 3. And that is it simplified down to its smallest form. Okay. So C. Let's do this. Square root of 7xy squared times 3 square root of x. Okay, so remember here the 3 is on the outside. So we are going to say 3, then we're going to combine, we've got a 7, we've got an x here and another x here, so that's 2x's and two y's. All right, so we can see that the seven is not a perfect square. X to the second and y to the second are perfect squares. So I'm gonna say three times x squared times y squared times square root of seven, because I know the square root of seven is not a perfect square. They did it a little bit different. It does not matter how you do it as long as your end result is a correct answer. So here, this and this are perfect squares, so I know 3xy comes out and I have the square root of 7. And I just want to explain to you why this is a perfect square. Because it means x times x, okay? And I have two of the same, so it simplifies to x, just like if I had 7 times 7. 49, the perfect square of 49 is 7, okay? So that you understand that. All right, so example 3. This is a big thing that we do. Use the quotient. Quotient is division. It's a fraction. Property of radicals. All right, so remember the rules is they do not like having a square root or any kind of radical in the bottom of the fraction. So if it's a perfect square, that's the easiest scenario. You get rid of it. So I've got the perfect, well, I've got the square of 13 and the perfect square of 100. So they don't care about the top. The top can stay as a radical, the bottom can. So the simplest thing we can do is that it's a perfect square and the perfect square of 100 is 10. That is it. It has no perfect square in the bottom, so it's simplified. Same here. Square root of 7 over x squared. I can go ahead and split it apart. Do it like this. Is this a perfect square? It is. So that is it. There's nothing else to be done. But obviously we're going to get to examples now of where they are not perfect squares. So here's example four. Okay, because there's a lot in this. So I'm going through the examples. I've now got five square root of seven. So I know the square root of 7 is not a perfect square. But the trick is they call it rationalize a denominator. Make it a perfect square. So from the other lesson, think about it. What makes it a perfect square? By multiplying by another square root of 7. So if I do that on the bottom, then I have to do it on the top. Okay. So whatever you do has to balance. If I multiply the bottom of a fraction by square root of 7, I have to multiply the top by the square root of 7. So on top, I've got 5 square root of 7, and that's not a problem. Then I know the square root of 7 and the square root of 7 
is going to be the square root of 49, it's just 7. So remember, if you have two of the same thing, and it's a, you're going to make a perfect square, and it's just going to be whatever it is. So there you simplify it. So now here, I've got the square root of 2 over the square root of 3b. So I've got a 3 and a b, not just one thing in there. So the problem is the square root of 3b. We need to get rid of it. We need to get rid of the square root. So I'm going to multiply by another square root of 3b. What I do on the bottom, I have to do on the top, okay? So on the top, take care of the top first, okay? So uh, that becomes the square root of 2 times 3 is 6b, okay? There's no perfect squares on top, so it can stay like that. They have no problems with the radical being on the top of a fraction. But on the bottom, so look here, I've got 3 and 3, so I've got two 3s, and I've got a b and b, I've got two b's. So have I not made it a perfect square on the bottom? So the final answer is the square root of 6b over 3b. And that's it. That's exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for it not to be under a radical. Okay, so it's a little trick. It's called rationalize the denominator. And you're going to have to do this in algebra 2 and pre-cal, pre calculus, all that stuff. The last thing, example five, is adding and subtracting radicals. There are different rules when you add and subtract than when you multiply. You could see up top, you can multiply. Just want to remind you, square as long as there are square roots 2 times 3b, I can put it under square root of 6b. That's not the same when you're adding and subtracting. Okay, You can only add and subtract radicals that have the same roots, they're both squares, and they have the same numbers underneath. If they don't, you can't do it. So here I've got 4 square root of 10 plus the square root of 13 minus 9 square root of 10. So the ones that are the same are these two. Okay, The square root of 13 is by itself. It doesn't have another square root of 13. So I put the things together that are the same. So 4 square root of 10 minus 9 square root of 10 plus the square root of 13. It makes it easier to add or subtract or whatever I have to do. So then 4 minus 9 is just negative 5 square root of 10 plus the square root of 13. There's nothing else you can do with that. Okay, so that's your final answer. Negative 5 square root of 10 plus square root of 13. All right. You simplified it to its simplest form. Now here, I'm going to work this one out. 5 square root of 3 plus square root of 48. And a lot of them are going to be like this, where they don't look the same. But the square root of 48 can be broken down to a square root of 3. So they tend to give you numbers that can do that. I could see with 10 and 13, I could never get them the same. But 48 can be broken down to 16 times 3. So watch what you're going to do. 5 square root of 3, that's in its simplest form. You can't do anything else with this. But 48 is the square root of 16 times 3. So it helps to use a calculator. And if you know that you've got a 3, try to make this number and see if it could be 3 times something. So that's your hint, OK? If it if it can't, then you can't add them together. But you can simplify this. So this is completely done. But this now becomes, you can think about it like we've been doing it like this, square root of 16 times the square root of 3. So 5 square root of 3 plus 16 uh, is a perfect square, so it becomes 4 square root of 3. Now, they're exactly the same, so I can add them. 5 plus 4 is 9, square root of 3, and there you have simplified it down to its smallest form. Okay? So remember, the difference between adding and subtracting and multiplying, okay? They do have different rules. That's why in math you've just got to practice, guys. The more you practice, the more proficient you're going to be at it. Okay? So... 
Now we're getting to multiply. Last example, we won't worry about example seven. We're just stop on example six, I think. But this is a lot within this. So we'll spend uh, quite a few days on this, getting the hang of everything. Okay, so here we've got the square root of five times four minus the square root of 20. Okay, so we are multiplying, all right? So the square root of five times four. Four is not under a radical, so we write it four times square root of five, and then we're going to multiply this together, minus the square root of five times the square root of 20, okay? All right, so you've got this square root of five times the square root of 20. You could have put them together as a square root of 100 straight away or did it like this, okay? It doesn't matter. Four square root of five is done. Okay, and then this 5 times uh, 20 is 100. So the square root of 100 is a perfect square. Hopefully you recognize some of your perfect squares. So it's going to simplify to 4 square root of 5 minus 10. Okay, and that is it simplified down to its smallest form. <laughs> so again, we're back to multiplying, not adding. So you can multiply as long as they have the same um, graphs. All right. All right, so the last one here, we're multiplying square root of seven plus square root of two, square root of seven minus three square root of two. Okay, so here we're gonna use FOIL. So square root of 7 times square root of 7. That's going to be square root of 49. I'm writing it out, and you should know that will simplify to 7 because it's the same thing. Then the first term to the, uh, that sorry, the outer terms. Square root of 7 minus times negative 3 square root of 2 is going to be negative 3. And then square root of 7 times square root of 2 is 14. Okay, just remember the rules. Then inside, the square root of 2 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 14. And then the square root of 2 times negative 3 square root of 2 is negative 3 square root of 4. Okay, square root of 49 is 7 minus 3 plus 1, because here you can add when they're the same. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 square root of 14 minus 3, and this square root of 4 is a perfect 2, times 2. So we're going to simplify. This becomes minus 6, right? Negative 3 times 2 is 6. So I have 7 minus 2, square root of 14 minus 6. Can I put these two together? 7 minus 6 is 1, and then minus 2, square root of 14, is the final answer. So you will have to FOIL some of them, okay? So it's just going to be practice. So just remember, you have to understand the rule, rules of multiplying and adding. So multiplying, as long as they're both the same, the roots like squares or cubes, right now we're not doing cubes, we're concentrating on squares, then you can multiply the numbers together, okay? When you add, you can only add if they have the same square root and the same number inside. So don't cross those two things. All right, guys, um, I'm finished with 11.2, um, I think this is. All right.